So again, Mr. Sheikh, thank you very much for having me with your staff members, team members, and your entire system. It is my privilege to be delivering leadership skills. And I thought, what a way to provoke our far thinking. Why don't we talk about leading in and beyond the classroom? So again, my name is Dr. Meru Ritz. So as a way of introducing my hand, my, my name or myself, I would like to just give you a story. I was born and raised in Zimbabwe, southern part of Africa. As a little girl, I would go to school and be taught by people like you. I would be inspired and come back home in the afternoons, sit on the dirt and pretend to be a teacher myself. So whatever people like you had taught me in school, I would come back and have my own imaginary students and start to teach them whether it was mathematics and whether it was English or Shona, my language. And then my brothers and my sisters then called me the teacher. And fast forward in my forties, I am now a teacher of leadership. I'm the president and founder of an organization called Aumenta International. I am based in Atlanta, Georgia. My work focuses on customers, leadership, and teams. I believe that organizations, whether it's school systems, nonprofit, or for profit organizations, can have systems in place, can have products in place. But if the people component of an organization is broken, then we don't have sustainability or performance. Therefore, my work really helps organizations develop their teams and their leadership in terms of customer management, leadership, and team development. I've had the privilege of working in eight different countries, six African countries, Canada, and the United States. So in today's discussion, we are going to look at a leadership framework that I normally teach from. This leadership framework has got four steps. It talks about leading self, leading others, number two, mm -hmm. leading the organization and leading the community. As you and I can imagine, we don't have the whole day to unpack this particular framework. So for today, we are going to look at some aspects of leading self and aspects of leading others. Let me ask you some provoking questions. How have you experienced leadership in the recent world? Whether within your school systems, on your different campuses or the world over? Do you believe that this generation of leaders, whether it's teachers, whether it's principals, whether it's CEOs, are really geared to lead people in the 21st centuries? What are some of the challenges have they faced? And what are some of the areas where they've really done very well? So today, through leading in and beyond the classroom, we are going to discuss three key agenda items. Number one, reframing our beliefs. And number two, leading self. And then number three, leading others. By the end of the training session, you will have the confidence and the tools that you can go and influence and impact in your different environments and your teams. Just a problem overflow. I, I'm speaking to the converted here. You are in the system of education, you're in the system of learning and development. So I'm going to advise you just to take as many notes as you can. All right? Because not everything here, some of it I'll just be speaking for my, for my spirit. And then if I can also ask you please to mute yourselves if you're not speaking, and then you unmute yourself when you're speaking. 
I really encourage chatting through the chat box and questions and answers and reactions. So Mr. Sheikh, please also just monitor the chat box for me so that if there are any comments or any questions coming through, we can pause and address them as we go along. I'll also use the breakout yeah. rooms. Thank you very much, Ms. Che. So we'll use our breakout rooms where I'll put you in groups where you can go and brainstorm, come back, and then we can even further brainstorm and explore in, um, in the bigger room. This is what I call accelerated learning because we are learning some concepts in one and a half hours. And sometimes we need more time and sometimes we need to dig deeper and we don't really have the time to do that today. But we will not accelerate this learning for the sake of it. We don't have to finish all the content that I've prepared. The whole idea is for us to rest in some places where we need to rest and really explore deeper. But if we don't need to, we move faster. So we're not just gonna be moving quickly for the sake of doing it. We wanna make sure that we are all on the same page and we're extracting value from this content. I'll also ask you to take SMART goals. So what are the things that we're going to be talking about that you believe you can take and go and work on and start to implement? So SMART goals will stand for, S stands for something that is very specific, M that is measurable, a, that is attainable, and R, that is um, retainable. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, attainable, and then that is uh, realistic, and that is time bound. So when you're setting your time, your SMART goals, be sure to say, is this a SMART goal that, can go, that I can go and actually implement, so to speak? The idea is bridging the program material and your world. So this information that I'm sharing, some of it is coming, we're borrowing some of it from the corporate world, but how do you take that and incorporate it in the school system, all right? And some of the learnings here that I've also taken from a teacher's perspective or from a school system's perspective, how do we take that and also apply it in the corporate world or in the nonprofit organizations that are not educational uh, founded, so to speak? So in other words, we're taking different worlds and we're making them collide. The big questions that we're going to be asking are, this particular concept we are discussing, how am I going to take it and apply it in my current situation? Whether you're a principal, whether you're a staff member, or whether you're a teacher, okay? So let's bridge our world with the content. Some more people are checking in. So for your own, Information, Mr. Sheikh, we are sitting at 27 now. Right. Again, I encourage your engagement so that you can retain. There's this, you know, these three phrases that I normally use when I encourage people to interact with me. I always say what I hear, I forget. What I see, I remember. But when I'm fully engaged, I understand. So please, let's have robust discussions, let's challenge one another, and let's make this a memorable event. So remember, I promised that we'll start, we are focusing on three key agenda items. So we are starting into agenda number one, reframing our beliefs. But before I move to reframing our beliefs, I would love to hear from you in the chat to say when Mr. Sheikh invited you to come to this forum, what are some of your expectations today? I'd love to hear some of your thoughts around that. What are your expectations for today's discussion?
Wonderful, thank you. Improve ourselves. Well done, Mr. Rashid. Thank you. Wonderful. I love that. That actually encompasses a lot. We want to improve ourselves. Okay, good. Anila says, I was excited to learn about leadership qualities and how to manage things in organized manner, how to improve ourselves. Well done. Thank you very much. I want to be solution oriented, person to lead my staff well. Great job. Thank you very much. Wonderful, wonderful. And I would like to apologize upfront. I may mispronounce some of your names and I may call you Mr. or Mrs. because I don't know the difference sometimes. So please allow me to call you maybe by your first names if you don't mind. I hope I'm, you can give me that grace. All right. Thank you very much. So that I don't call you Mr. when you're actually Mrs or Mrs. when you're actually Mr. So if you don't mind, if I can, can call you by your first name, just to be on the safe side. Wonderful, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Anila. Wonderful. So let's start with agenda number one, reframing our beliefs. As leaders or organizations, we need to start thinking differently. We need to start viewing the world differently. What are the things that we did in the past that worked, that did not work, that produced maybe not so great ideas? So how do you and I start to reframe our minds so that we can create solutions to our problems that are lasting, that are sustainable? So as human beings, sometimes we are what we call, we are programmed in the way that we see the world in the way that we experience life or in the way that we teach our students. But are we willing to be reframed or to be reprogrammed so that we can chatter new courses of action, so to speak? So on that note, as I'm giving you that context, my next question to you would be, what are some of the leadership challenges have you faced in the, in the last couple of months, especially with COVID or any other situation mm -hmm. that has really taken you off your, your, your normal route, uh, route. What are some of the leadership challenges have you faced? Everyone is requested. They can write on the chat box so that we can see, or Ms. Mary can see you all there. Sure. Rather than Thank speaking, you. you can write over there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shade. Rashid says teaching online. Yes, I've heard that. That's very true. I've got a, a sister of mine who's a teacher in Zimbabwe. She could not breathe when this whole started. She was like, these are like two jobs. I have to be a teacher and now I have to learn this technology. So I understand, Rashid. Thank you very much. Teaching online has been a challenge for most people, even here in the United States. Even for me, because all my work prior to 2020 was 90% on a face to face, but I had to quickly pivot, full time pivot. And now I do 90% of my work online. So I understand. Anybody else? What are some of the leadership challenges are we facing today? You're very right, Ms. Shaikh, making everybody happy at the same time. You're very right. What I think about Ms. Shaikh as you say that is because we are leaning towards leadership that says, see the individual, manage the individual at an individual capacity or manage the student as an individual, not a classroom per se. So understanding what each one needs at every level could be a challenge. Thank you. Followers don't listen. They don't trust sometimes. You're very right. So you repeat, you repeat, you repeat, and they just don't follow you. And then manage tasks at the same time, multiple tasks at the same time. You're very right. Lack of communication. Yes. 
thank you very much for that input. I really enjoy that. So we are in the right place because I'm going to start giving you some of these tools that will help you overcome some of these challenges you have been experiencing. So reframing our beliefs. Let's talk about the world that we are in right now. We are in a world that I call VUCA. If you look at the left-hand side, you follow the V-U-C-A, that's VUCA. And then the V stands for volatile. The world that we live in now, you're no longer sure. It's very uncertain and it's complicated. It's quite chaotic. Look at what happened last year with the virus. And it's ambiguous, it's not clear anymore. And then the economy is, 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 is unstable and political instability. The, the consumer, in your case, the student, maybe the, the, the parents of the students have become quite sophisticated and quite demanding, so to speak, as your clients or as your customer. Social instability, an ever-changing world. So all these factors have created what we call the VUCA uh, environment. And you and I are supposed to be leading in that. It's almost unfair to be able for us to be expected to lead in a world that is unpredictable, but that's what we are. So therefore, the reframing of our minds is important. As I said earlier on, we can no longer do things in some cases that we did 20 years ago, that we did five years ago. The change is here to stay. This volatile situation may be here to stay for a long time. So it's up to you, the teacher, the principal, the, uh, the receptionist, the accountant in the school system, and myself to be able to reframe how we think so that we can produce better results. Then Albert Einstein says, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. That's insanity. So if I see that something is not working and it's not working, or this communication style that I'm using towards my staff, they don't keep, the people are not changing, they're not listening. And if I keep insinuating on the same communication style, that's insanity. That's what Albert Einstein, Albert Einstein says. So it means something has to give. So if I feel like people are not following me and I, continue on the leadership style that I've been using for the next five, for the last five years, and I don't see the results, it means that I'm not reframing myself. So the reframing of ourselves means that we need to reprogram ourselves, our minds. And now we're talking into something that we call neuroplasticity. I'm not a neurosurgeon, so I'm not gonna dive into it deeper, but I'm gonna give you just enough information so that you can understand the concept of framing or programming yourself, and then we can take it from there. So we are programmed or we are, fra we are framed. Something frames our mind, and those are the voices in our heads or the voices in our minds. If I can ask you how many voices are in your head, as you go on by your day, every single day, how many voices are in your head? One, two, three, four. If you're like me, you have plenty, all right? So I have one voice that says, go to the gym. You need to keep fit. Another voice that says, no, you need to do your work first and then go to the gym as a break oh gosh, I cannot do that paper right now. I'm not quite ready for it. Oh my goodness, my sales skills are not so great. I need to find somebody that I can hire. So there are certain voices that play in our heads. My big question to you is who put those voices into your head? I'd like to see in the chat. Or also if you want to unmute yourself and speak so that we can hear your voice, that will also be welcome. So I'll give it 10 seconds to hear your responses.
where do the mind voices come from? Where did they originate from? While I'm waiting for you to respond, my voices came from people like you, the teachers. So teachers, adults around us, they put voices, all right? Or from your environment, or from the places that you're involved in, from your culture. So have you heard of this? A man does not behave in that way. A woman does not behave in that way, all right? A child does not speak to the elders that way, all right? Or no, you cannot do that. You're not good at mathematics or you're good at English, or you come from Zimbabwe, that's a very backward country. So when you start that programming that starts very early, you start to believe it, okay? Let me read in the chat as well. All right, thank you, Mr. Shai. So we have all these mind voices that have programmed us, and therefore we take these mind voices to the work environment. We take these mind voices to the environment in the school system. So if you believe that maybe others are smarter than others, then your worldview will approach people like that. If you believe that employees need to be coerced and controlled, then your leadership style will be one that controls and that coerces people. But if you believe that, if your programming believes that people need an opportunity, people need a great environment to flourish in, therefore your leadership style will bring in that whole idea of conduciveness of an environment that is safe, that you can build trust, so to speak. So programming happens as early as you're born. Like now, somebody said here, they teach students from six to nine. You are, as teachers, you're programming these kids right now. That is gonna affect them for the rest of their lives. So let's come back to the slide, framing. So programming means that I've got these voices that play in my head and they've really become pronounced, all right? So they create thoughts and feelings. So these thoughts that I have are maybe even thoughts of fear, of courage, of boldness, but then the actions that I take, if I'm afraid of something, then I don't, I avoid it, right? So if I don't get involved in it, it means that the results that I'm gonna achieve are going to be poor, in other words. So however programming is in your head will produce the results according to that programming. It will produce actions and thoughts according to that programming. Okay. I like that also. I think that's the dove. Those voices come from our own selves because there would be lack, uh, lack of self-confidence. Spot on, I agree with you. So sometimes you tell yourself things. You try something, it doesn't work. Now you formulate the voice and say, I'm not good at that. I'm terrible at that. The good news is that we can reframe our minds. Our limiting beliefs, remember, can be challenged. We can reprogram, we can reframe. And if we reprogram our minds, we can now think of new thoughts and new feelings and new actions and new results. So those mind voices can be recreated. I'm gonna give you an example of my own self. I'm gonna start off with programming. When I grew up in Zimbabwe, going to school, though I loved teaching, but there was one thing that I stayed away from that I hated with a passion that was mathematics. My mom and dad had said, no, Mary, you're not that smart. Mathematics will not really help you out. My own siblings that were much smarter than me also told me, no, 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 you cannot. Mathematics is not your thing. My own school teachers, first grade to high school, told me that I was not good at mathematics. Programming was done and Mary owned it and I believed it, all right? Then my thoughts and feelings towards mathematics were I was afraid, I was not good enough. In fact, mathematics intimidated me, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I was afraid of it. 
I did not participate in class. In all my other classes, I would sit at the front, but when it came to mathematics, I would sit at the back. As a result, my actions were not involving. I was not participating. In fact, my homework, mathematics, I did not do it. I did it early in the morning, like five minutes before class or 15 minutes before mathematics class. The results, I failed my mathematics. Never passed my mathematics. Yes, I do have a PhD, but I failed my mathematics from junior school to high school because programming was done and the results were negative. Fast forward, I enrolled to come to university here in North Carolina to do my MBA. But before I was admitted into the MBA class, I had to do some bridging classes. One of the classes I had to take was mathematics. Whoa, can you believe my experience? I'm like, is this happening to me? Then I met a professor. My first meeting with the professor, the mathematics professor was, I say to him, I've never passed mathematics, but I need to pass this class so that I can move on to my MBA. In that meeting, he started to reprogram me. He says, Mary, you will pass mathematics. You are good at mathematics. I've never taken a student who does not pass mathematics. And I'm like, whoa, are you serious? New thoughts, new feelings. My first exam, I got a 37%. My next exam, I got a 67%. When I finished that class, I was at 88%. What happened? My thoughts, my feelings were reprogrammed. My actions, I was now doing my homework. I played with a younger girl who was very smart and who knew mathematics and we became best friends. And she started teaching me. My new results, an 88, a B plus at the end of that semester. So why are we doing this exercise in a leadership class? Why do you think we are doing this exercise? Why are we taking our time to say, let's reframe our minds? Why am I giving you this example and asking you to reframe your, your minds already? Mr. Sheikh, I'm gonna pick on you. Why, why do you think we are doing this? Uh, you want them to rethink, reconsider the beliefs they have in their minds so that they should be more optimistic, more positive, yes. rather than believing the negative yes. results that they have faced. Exactly. So it's good to be uh, on the right direction. Like when we have on the way driving and we feel that this is the wrong direction, actually I'm driving. So we, had, we take a U-turn. So this U-turn takes us to the right direction. So mm -hmm. same happens in your mind. When you have some negative thoughts, so you should realize immediately and you should take a U-turn to go on the right direction. Right. Eloquently explained, Ms. Shaikh. Thank you very much. And Amber also Most said certainly. reprogramming helps us to adjust towards new challenges. That's exactly it. All right. Positive thinking, Thanks. positive results. Great job. To motivate, to encourage. Well done. Reprogramming will lead us to accept the new challenges in a more positive way. Great job. Positive compliments helps us to build our confidence and ourselves. Well done. Gives us most of the time, makes us sure. <clears throat> most of the time, we do not need others to motivate us. We do not need others to encourage or tell us something positive. We have to guide ourselves. You're right. So we are the leaders first for our own self. Mm -hmm. So if we lead ourselves positively, optimistically, Yes. then we would be able to lead others also positively and optimistically. Yes. So first we have to believe in ourselves. Yes. Wonderful. Very good job. Very good job. And as, as I bring to tie this together, I'm going to tie it as, remember how we started. If you're programmed in a certain way, look at the results that you're producing. 
if the results are not positive, then you need to reprogram yourself. If the results are positive, then you move on. But if the results are negative, if the results are not what you desired, we start to look at looking self inside us first and seeing where we need to change in our own ways, okay? So well done. So in that regard of programming, most people believe that there are certain aspects that play into leadership. They believe that leadership is a top down. If the principal does not tell me what to do at the top, if they don't guide me, then I'm not a leader right here as a teacher or as a receptionist, I'm not a leader. But that's a misbelief, we need to change that. Leadership belongs to everybody. Leaders are charismatic. So in other words, only when you're flamboyant, when you're influential, when you've got a big character, when you're eloquent in speaking, when, when, when you walk in, the room keeps quiet because your presence is so big. No, it's not about that. Even the quiet people can lead in, their, in themselves. They can just influence as well. So let's think about it. So a teacher maybe who stands in front of people all the time could be perceived as charismatic and therefore they can lead all the time. But somebody who sits behind a desk who is an accountant or a financial analyst can be perceived as somebody who cannot lead. That's a limiting belief and we need to reframe that and own our leadership in our own sense. And then other people believe that leadership belongs to others. It does not believe, it does not belong to them. I always say, as long as you're a human being, the first person that you need to lead is yourself and then lead others. So whether you've got nephews, whether you've got students, whether, you've got a, 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 whether you're married or not married, all those atmospheres require you to lead and to influence. Leaders are smarter and more creative. Even if they are not as smart as others and maybe not so creative, they can bring people around them that are smarter in areas that are not so smart at or more creative. Like what I did in my high, in my, at my MBA level, I then got somebody who was smarter than me when it, became, when it came to mathematics and she helped me along. So if you're not good at something, look at who is in your sphere and ask them to rally around you so that they can help you out. They can help you out. And lastly, and I wanna emphasize this one, leadership is not about position, titles or the office that you occupy or power or status, it's not. So the fact that you and I, I'm a president of an organization, it does not make me a leader. I earn leadership by leading by example. The fact that you're a teacher, the fact that you are a receptionist, the fact that you're a principal, that position does not give you the power or the status of leadership. What you do and your character, your influence, and the way that you treat others will determine your leadership level, okay? So how do we reframe some of these limiting beliefs? So you can pick on anyone here that you, that you believe that was limiting you here and you can tell me how you're going to reframe. Did you believe leadership is top down? Did you believe you had to be charismatic to be influential? Or any other that are not here as examples that you believe you need to reframe so that you can own your leadership? That's a question and you can say something in the chat. While I'm waiting for somebody to respond, I want to read some of the comments here. Sadaf said leadership is basically influence others, influencing others. Well done. That's it. We're going to dive into that shortly. And Anila says teamwork matters when it comes to leadership. Good job. Very good job.
I love that, Ms. Amber. Uh, Ms. Amber. Leader makes the team important and manager and manage himself, herself. True leaders are in front of his or her team members. All right. They even lead in difficult situations. Very good. Very good. Well done. Thank you, Anila, for that comment. All right. So I'm going to put you in groups right now. I'd like us to reframe leading in and beyond the classroom. As teachers or staff members, how can we reframe how we teach or manage our classrooms? We are about 24 people here. I'm going to break you out in three groups. I'm going to give you about three minutes only. Please jot down this question. As teachers or staff members, how can we reframe how we teach or manage our classrooms? And let's come back. You have one spokesperson who will discuss what you guys would have discussed in the room, summarizing in a minute. So right now the instruction is, I'm going to break you out in, 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 in three groups, eight members per group or 788, discuss how teachers or staff members can reframe how they teach or manage classrooms, all right? And then find a spokesperson who come and present or summarize what you have spoken about in the breakout room. Three minutes, I'm going to break you out now. I'll do it manually. I've created the rooms. And off you go.
happen they do ruin the uh, their potential and their effectiveness that's what my i mean opinion is. Wonderful. Hello, everybody. Can listen me? Anybody can listen me? Yeah, yeah, everyone can listen to you. You can participate now. Okay. I'm Mr. Abia Tayyab here. How are you all? Good. I just want to say. Okay, thank you. I just want to say that I am as a uh, very beginner teacher of very beginners. So I am teacher of play group. So I guess the very prepared environment can give leadership to any child. uh they uh, in any child there is a big star in it so every child have their own mind and they can give you this, uh, very surprisingly things they are doing such a great things on daily basis so if we give them the prepared environment or the good environment so you can get anything from the child so we have to give a chance to each and every child so they can give us a more more uh, more more uh, like a different surprising things so i think every child have their every child inside the very big actor or star in them so we can just just we have to give chance to each and every child as a leader so we can get our um, goals from the students i guess yeah very, very good rabia i think can we make all the students in the class leaders yes of yes uh, sir actually i yes sir actually i am just saying this thing that if we give them a prepared environment so we can get different things from each and every one everyone is a leader itself so if we are giving them a chance so we will get our goal from them so we should Very give good. them chance so, so when you give them the leadership chance leadership is called this very good so you mean in short that if we give the chance to each and every child in the classroom all the students yeah. in the classroom can be a very good leader for us yes right the, no matter Because, no matter huh, no matter is there any child is a special child or any other normal child if you will give the chance to any special child so he can give, he will surprise you to give him or her, her uh, actions towards the activities or prepared environment so every very child good. is a leader if you lead him him or her in a proper way so every child is a leader very good i would request every one yeah. of you now you can participate with your audio so that we can hear your voice we can hear your participation and your ideas okay thank you so much sir so let, let, let me just uh, stop there for a while yes. okay so i've put you in group 2 or in, in in three groups so my desire now is to go to group 1 which is where mr shaikh is already all right so my idea was to understand what way so i heard you we want to create we want to treat every child as a germ or as a diamond in the making they're a leader they can do it every child deserves that opportunity and we need to see that is that the, is that the primarily overarching message that group 1 was talking about that was your group mit shay is that it Uh, Sarashi, you're going to speak up. I am from group two. Okay. okay, so let's wait for group two, but let's hear from group one. One, just take a minute from group one, for one person to represent what you were talking about in the group. I think Ms. Okay. Uh, Rabia already mentioned. Okay, good. Uh, Tayyaba, the group one is done now. Group two, I think. Okay, good. Very good. So group two, over to you. Okay. Yeah. Um. Hi, uh, this is Rashid Nasim, uh, and I am a Chinese language teacher here. here. And uh, I think uh, we uh, we think every uh, first first of all we have to stop uh, comparing uh, with the students. Like he is uh, he is a better uh, than his. Uh, you have to give the chance to everybody to come. Uh, 
on the stage and to perform uh, their skills. Uh, so I think uh, they have uh, all, all, all of them have uh, different skills uh, and a different uh, kind of uh, they are learners. Like some are uh, good, uh, fast learners and some are slow learners. But they, I think they are they uh, learned. Uh, everyone uh, learn uh, in a different way. Yes. Exactly. Uh, mm, okay. yes. I, I believe that the um, I'm a preschool teacher, so and I believe that uh, leaders uh, to manage our classroom. The key point is that a teacher or a leader should be, uh, you know, well organized. He or she should be well organized. He, she or she should pre plan everything. Like, you know, in, in a class, we have a different kind of students. Some are visual learners, some are audio visual learners, some are kinesthetic learners. So we should plan our uh, lesson plan according to them. So, and it, the lesson plan should be interactive. If it's going to be interactive, all the students, they are going to take interest in your classroom. They will take interest in your lectures, in your, you know, whatever you are introducing. And um, the one more thing that like, uh, when you are a preschool teacher, you should treat uh, all the students like you're like a mother. You know, when you, when you treat them, them, them like a mother, you, when you give them up to, when you treat them with the love, they will definitely go into lesson uh, to your teacher. So I think these, uh, the class uh, organized, uh, our leader should be organized, well organized and pre plan his lesson plan to manage a uh, classroom. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Group three, the final group. And I'll tell you who was in that group just in case you may not know, but let's see. Uh, Afshan, Anila, Asra, that was the group. Um, hello, hello everyone. This is Neda from group three. So as we were discussing about the leadership skills for students. So I think that uh, being a teacher as all, we all are teachers here. So we should create such opportunities for our students that they feel, uh, you know, important um, in front of everyone. And I think, uh, and what I believe is like, I have seen so many people, they, they say that Leadership skills are God gifted, but I'm not worried why because you know, being a teacher, we can provide a, um, like you can say, a platform where they can easily uh, show their skills, leadership skills, uh, to others. So I think we should provide opportunities to each and every child. In in fact, we should create such opportunities so they can show their abilities and skills to to lead the world. And, uh, you know, I think every child has that stamina. We just need to forage that. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love that. I really love that. I hear the passion. Yes. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you much. Want. Thank you very much. For the sake of time, we're going to conclude on that. But what I heard you say, we are going to reframe. We are going to understand that all students, are not the same. We have to understand them at an individual level. So we are reframing, thinking that we cannot treat our ex student like Y student. No, we have to understand them at an individual level. I also heard like, we have to plan ourselves as teachers. We can't just show up in class and expect things to just work. Us as teachers, we really need to understand the importance of organizing of planning. I also heard we need to find creative ways where our students can participate in their own unique way. I also heard something very powerful. Teaching is a God gift, God given gift. So when we are in there with them, let's love on them. When we love on them, they're going to listen to us as their parents, so to speak. So there's a lot of reframing that you've talked about already. So well done team, very, very proud. For the sake of time, let's move along. So in the chat earlier on, somebody had said leadership is influence. Yes, I agree. Leadership is influence, it's nothing more, nothing less. That's just John Maxwell. So if you wanna start really diving into the leadership debate, 
I would recommend John Maxwell's work or John Maxwell's books. That's a very good place to start. It's a good place to start. It's not the only way, okay? Then the other definition of leadership is, it's a process of social influence, which maximizes the efforts of others towards the achievement of a goal. And I heard that already in exercise one. We want to help them achieve their goals. These children that are coming to school, they wanna be learners, they wanna be doctors, they wanna be artists, they want to be teachers. So how do we influence them to reach their God-given gifts, to be their God-given goals, so to speak, all right? So that's it. So as a leader, you create the atmosphere. You don't stifle it. You do not suppress the talent. You create an atmosphere where they can find themselves so that they can go and get what they are required to do for the world. So we've done now reframing beliefs. Now let's move on to leading self. Remember in the framework, we talked about leading self and leading others. I truly believe that leaders that are successful, that are effective, teachers that are more effective, principals that are more effective, our staff members in a school system that are more effective need to start by leading self. And under leading self, we're going to look at behavioral styles. All human beings are self-leaders. However, not all self-leaders are effective at self-leading. Month 1983. So we have to master this art of leading self first. And the leading self, there are various components that I teach. Number one, behavioral styles. Number two, our values and our beliefs can help us be powerful leaders. Our emotional intelligence, our strengths and our weaknesses. For today's class, we are going to focus on behavioral styles. Self-leadership is having a developed sense of who you are, what you can do, where you are going, coupled with the ability to influence your communication, emotions and behavior, and the way that you do to get there. Leading self is about understanding your character traits as a leader, and in terms of your, the way that you behave, the way that you think, and the way that you feel about yourself, about others. So this is really a mastery of the mindset. It's a mastery of saying, who am I? And how best do I show up? If we don't do this work as teachers, as leaders, as principals, we are shortchanging our students. So in other words, my framework under leadership argues that True leadership starts off from the inside and then it goes to the outer. I see that I've got some, um, some chats in there. All right, I just wanted to check in the chat to see if there were any, any questions or any comments that we could talk about, but that's okay. So let's move right along. So under, behave, under leading self, we are going to talk about behavioral styles. Behavioral styles is you know, your inclination to how you process information, how you influence others, and even how you, com you, you communicate, how you manage your emotion. So we all know the golden rule, right? What does the golden rule assert? What does it mean to, to be a golden rule abider? That can, can somebody unmute themselves and just tell me what gold, the golden rule stands for? I'll give you, go, the golden rule stands for treat others the way that you want to be treated you want to be treated. That's a good way of influencing your students. So I'm gonna treat my students the way that I wanna be treated. But there's even something better than the golden rule. That is the platinum rule. The platinum rule assesses that, treat others the way that they wanna be treated. 
which means that we start to treat our students the way that they were created, the way that they, they have their orientation. So if a student likes certain ways of being instructed, that's how we're gonna instruct her or him. And the other way around, if the other one uh, deserves or wants to be treated in a certain way or to be instructed in a certain way, we go out of our way to influence. And for those of you that are also influencing other people, your team, your employees, even, even people in the community, you start to understand how they are wired and then you start to treat them like what they wanna be treated. So in the behavioral styles, you have four quads. You have the doer and the thinker, task oriented, the talker and the guardian, they're people oriented. The doer and the thinker are similar in that they're driven by action, they're driven by results. The thinker and the guardian are also, have, they have some similarities. They're easygoing, they're more casual in their approach. The talker and the guardian, they're people oriented, which means that they love people. And the dominant ones are the talker and the doer. So let me give you an example of a doer. A doer could be a principal. A doer could be a CEO. In some cases, a doer can also be a teacher, all right? These are people that want action. They don't really care about how you get there. They want the results. So their character traits, they can be impatient. They can be quite aggressive sometimes when you're speaking to them. They can be abrupt. The thinker, on the other hand, are people like your accountants, your mathematics teacher, your finance teacher. They're about detail. All right, but they also care about building great relationships. The guardian are really your HR, your teachers like you, your, your, your trainers like me. They like to build relationships. Your talkers are really your salespeople, the people that you see on television. Those are your talkers. So my question to you is where do you fall? Who do you think you are? Do you think you're a doer? Do you think you're a thinker? Do you think you're a talker? Do you think you're a guardian? I'll listen, I'll see in the chat. Ms. Sheikh, let's watch the chat and see how people are responding. Do you think you're a doer? Do you think you're a thinker? Or do I you think, think I'm you're a thinker. A you're a when thinker? You're a thinker? When you are a thinker, then you become a doer. And yes. when you become a doer, that means you are a talker. Okay. So everything comes when you begin with the seed thinker. Yes. yes, very good, very good, very good. So let's think about it. We, we've already agreed that the platinum rule says treat others the way that they wanna be treated. So if I'm a doer and if I'm dealing with a thinker and if I take the way that I think as a doer and I believe that the thinker must behave like me, do you see how it, that can be a problem? That's a problem. All right. So as you discover what you are, so when you're a thinker and somebody's a talker, it means that you have to understand how a, th how a talker processes information. All then right. you start to tailor your style to suit the talker. The talker will do the same thing as well. The talker must understand who a thinker is and how a thinker processes information. And then they'll have to cater to that. Remember we said leadership is influence. You influence people that you don't impose yourself on. If I come Mr. Shaik and I say, Mr. Shaik, you're going to have breakfast today at this time. And I'm going to make you eggs and baked beans and toast. This is what you're going to have. Will you like that Mr. Shaik? You won't like that because I'm imposing myself on you. But if I ask Mr. Shaik, what would you like for breakfast? And if you were to tell me you, what you like for breakfast, then I make it the way that you want. So in this quad, we have to realize that yes, we are all are different. We come up with our own uniqueness, but if we are going to influence people, we need to understand what motivates them, what drives them so that we can cater to them. Do you get my point team? Exactly. So we have to have an open-ended conversation rather than the closed one. Very true, Mr. Shai. Very true. Very, very true. 
So let's wrap it up here. Now we are saying the doers, these are the people that want to get it right. These are people that will not care about whether you ate at home, whether you slept well, what your home environment is like. They just want you to produce the results, all right? The thinkers are saying, we want facts. We want you to get it right. Think about what you're doing. Have you crossed the T's? Have you checked the T's, the I's, the dots? Is everything in place? The talker gets the morale going. Let's get excited. Let's get this project going. The guardian says, let's get along. We are a big family. All these people are in the work system. They're in your campuses. All these people that are doers and thinkers are the students that you're teaching. The way that you influence them is to understand what motivates them, is to understand what drives them. Then you cater for them. Is This is what we call flexing your style. So if I meet Mr. Shaikh and Mr. Shaikh right now is a doer, and if I'm a guardian, if I want to win Mr. Shaikh over, I must behave like a, like a doer. And if I want to meet, let's mean say Asima, and Asima is a talker, I need to go to Asima and act like a talker. It doesn't mean that I'm changing my style. It just means that I'm flexing to sit the situation so that I can influence people. Any questions at this point? So in short, we have to have the like-minded people conversation. Yes, but the, the like-minded people is appreciating that we are not alike. We are mm. not alike. But how do right. we accept each other? Because when we accept each other, that's when you become creative. So think about so the we, students that you were talking about, Ms. Shaikh, for, for a minute. The students that you said, they are different. You are not forcing that, ch that child to act like the other child. You are saying, who are you? And I'm interested in you. And I'm interested in your creativity. And I'm interested in making you be the best version of yourself. I'm not going to compare you to Ben or to Sarah. Ms. Shaikh? Hi. So in short, we have to be so flexible in front of our students in the classroom. The way they want to be treated, we should treat them. The way they behave, we have to go according to them. And then from their way, we have to change them to our way. Exactly. So we have to reach their minds. Yes. And then we have to influence them positively to yes. get the things done the way we want. So if exactly. we want to change anyone, first we have to reach the way they behave. Yes. So that we can move them from their place to our place. Exactly. And Ms. Jake, you're spot on, but I want to add something else. Is then how you mm. do it. So you've got, you've got um, a student X, right? And you've got a student Y. Those students want to go, they all want to be doctors, or both of them. But their behavior and the way that they want to get there is different. One of them is a student who you explain, if you sit down with them for five minutes, they're going to get it. And they can work independently. That's who they are. So Ms. Shake, all you do is you instruct, you say, go and read page five. And then from page five, go and do the question. That child will go and do it. The other child, on the other hand, may want you to motivate. May want you to say, hey, what do you think? Could you do this? They want more persuasion. So it's also in your language. Remember, it's about influence. So you're changing their mindset. You're making them buy into you because you're mm. leading them. So well done. So I would summarize it in a short, simple example here for all the staff uh, watching you. That take the example, like suppose you are standing in front of the whiteboard in the classroom and the student sitting on the fifth row or the sixth row, for example, and you're asking the child, come and sit down on the first seat. Now, would you like to say your student this way, or you will go to the sixth row first and ask the child standing in front of him near over there, to come and sit on the first row. Which style would you prefer to ask your child? Standing on the board, on the very first seat, 
and asking the child sitting on the sixth row come and sit down on the first seat will it work for you better or would you like to go closer to the student on the sixth row sitting and ask him over there come and sit down on the first seat which way would you prefer this is going to help you understand the right behavior in the class so that you can influence your child positively rather than negatively yeah. i hope uh, everyone understood the example anyone can say something on mic anyone which style would you prefer uh, yes sir uh huh uh yes sir in montessori there is a rule that if you are giving any activity task to the kids or you are giving any practice through material so you should go closer to the student you have to give him the close uh, relationship with you and the student so he or she can easily understand the concept and each and everything if Very if we good. if we will the comfort to the student the student will give you the better result rather than yet that you have to just uh, give your lecture and all you have to be uh, go to the student's place and give him the clear concept so he or she can uh, give you the better result i Very think good. you have to go close yes in Very montessori uh, you can in montessori uh, you can uh, see there is a round there is a round tables in all montessori's the furniture is uh, designed as a round table just because mm. of this like teacher teacher can act equally to all the students so teacher can give equal attention to all the students so students can easily get the concept very good so they can give you the better result yes very good so you understood physically when i asked you whether you will be standing in front of the door, uh, uh, white board and asking the child sitting in the sixth row to come and sit down the first or you would like to reach the child similarly when you physically reach the child as you mentioned the round tables are there around so similarly we have to be in their minds closer if you reach their minds closer similarly you will have the expression that you have brought them to the place like you went physically and you brought them to sit on the first seat so we have to have physically and plus uh, virtually in their minds same connection and you mentioned the word relationship this is the real meaning of leadership you when lead someone you have to build the better relationship in their minds when the students welcome the teacher when the students see the teacher and have a smile on their faces they have a very good understanding they have very good relationship and they listen to the teacher so this is coming closer in mind of the students many, many, many. like i gave you the example of standing on the board or going near to the student sitting in the sixth row and bringing them or him to the first row similarly we have to have this close relationship close access or reaching point in the minds of the students hope everyone understood the point yeah. ms mary you can yes. continue okay wonderful wonderful yes sir there's also another point that i want to build on and i'm going to leave okay on that note i'm going to leave this behavior stuff so the concept you are talking to now works perfectly with with students but when it comes to adults because remember teachers are also colleagues of each other you're influencing one another all right how it works best now can you see where i am the doer and the talker must meet in between the thinker whoever the two relationships are you meet in between now that you are aware of this you influence each other when you are both flexible think about it mr shake and i are working on a project mr shake is a doer and i'm a guardian and each time mr shake is telling me what to do and what he wants and the way that he wants it he doesn't listen to me i'll feel like i'm the one who is walking to him all the time going to him but he never listens to me vice versa if the guardian only just wants what the guardian wants 
and I don't listen to Ms. Shea, it means that it becomes a, it becomes a win-lose situation. As adults now, as teachers working together, as a principal trying to influence your teachers, you have to be flexible and meet them in the between. So this whole triangle starts to flex so that you can start to be here in the middle and you can flex your style so that you're meeting in the middle. Let's talk about it. I'm a married woman, right? If I keep saying to my husband, husband, do this for me, do this for me. And he keeps doing it for me. And then if he asks me, I never do it for him. My husband, sooner or later, he's going to feel that I'm taking him for granted. So in a relationship, these adults relationships, or now when you're influencing your teachers, you have to meet in the middle. Remember that always. Because if the other person feels like they are always coming to you, they'll feel despondent. They will not want to engage with you. You will not be able to lose. Very soon, they will not be talking to you or they will not give you the results that you're looking for. I just thought I wanted to, em to emphasize that, okay? We don't have time to go into a group, but I wanna finish this one. And Ms. Shaik, this you can do in your own meeting when you've got your teachers around you again. Go and unpack this, this, um, this whole behavioral style. Ask yourselves, how will you apply the behavioral styles concept to lead self and others? Your students and other adults in your lives, whether it's at home or in the community, who is an exemplary self-leader and what can we learn from him? My good example of a self-leader is Mandela, the president of South Africa, the late president of South Africa. So those are the people with the character traits that talk about leading self first before they leave the outer, okay? Now, I just wanna quickly remember your SMART goals. What is it that you learned in the session? Reframing yourself, leading self. What are your SMART goals? What are you going to work on going forward? Then leading others. Leading others, we're going to dive into how you motivate your students and your teams. But I will not go into that because that requires us to take more time in it. But where we are going to do now, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about class management tips because I heard you earlier on, the room quite, you were quite engaged when we were talking about that. So we, we won't do motivating teams for today. We are going to go straight into class management tips. I only have three for you, but you can build on that. All right, so class management. I'm going to give you this tool. Maybe you already have it for your students. It's what I call catching your students doing something right. You can do this if you, if, even if you lead adults, you can also catch your adults, your team members, your staff members doing something right. How does it work? You have level one of praise. This is where you say, Ms. Shaikh, well done for organizing. You just say, well done for organizing the, the training with Dr. Ritz. That's it, you're just praising. It's short and sweet. Well done, Sarah. Well done, uh, Raid. Well done, um, Ben. Well done, just your students. If they do their homework on time, well done. And I'm sure you do those every time. But you can also take it to what I call level two, where you're now acknowledging behavior. I'll now say, Ms. Shayik, well done for organizing a great training in a timely way. You showed patience, you showed understanding. I'm now acknowledging specific behavior. Level three is when I even go and appreciate not only behavior, but character traits. Mr. Shaikh, well done for pulling together a great training session. You showed planning, you showed organization and timeliness. You were patient with us when we were registering. You were patient with Dr. Ritz 
though she was in America and there was time difference. You showed understanding and empathy. Now you're showing the character traits that you want the students to emulate, to live by, so that other students can copy. All right. So praise is a quick one. Well done. Level two, acknowledging <clears throat> specific behavior. You came early today, all right, to class. Then after that, when you came early to class, you showed kindness to your students. You showed empathy to other people. So that's catching students doing something right. Thank you, Asma. You totally agree. That's it. Yes. Okay. So that's an example of catching somebody right, doing something right. I'm going to give you another tool, class management. I actually call it class leadership. Avoid punishing the class. So I remember when I was in school and the teacher, if, if, if one group was making noise, all of us were penalized for it, even the ones that were behaving well. That's an old sort of style of teaching and motivating students. It does achieve some results, but not the best results. So here we are encouraging teachers to lead by actually addressing the specific student in a friendly manner. So if you see that on that round table of six students, Mary is making noise. So you would ask in a friendly manner, Mary, do you have any question? You don't say stop talking and disrupting other students. All right. If you're a doer, you're bound to speak like that. Stop talking and disrupting other students because a, a doer is quite aggressive, it's quite direct. So doers, you have to claw back your style here and be more gentle and be more friendly. A talker is likely to do this very well. Um, a guardian is likely to do this very well. And um, thinker is likely to do these things very well because they're easygoing, they're people oriented. You also, have, you also say, do you need help to focus? You don't say, pay attention and stop fooling around while I'm talking. You don't speak like that. So these are all the reframing that we have to do. And I know that in some cases, students can really be hard. I know that. I was a student before. And sometimes the friendly tone does not reach the results that you want to. You can still be firm in your tone, but without shouting, without being disrespectful to the student. You can still be friendly and firm at the same time. Okay. I'm gonna give you time to, 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 to feedback on these, on these. Then the last one, encourage initiative. Here you want to cultivate the growth mindset and infuse a variety into lessons. For example, allow students to work ahead and deliver short presentations to share key points and learnings. So in a growth mindset, can you imagine, remember I told you that I struggled with mathematics. Can you imagine if my teachers had told me to change from, I'm not good at mathematics to say, I'm not yet good at mathematics or to say, I'm afraid or I'm intimidated by mathematics to say I can build courage and boldness to tackle mathematics. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm changing the way that I'm speaking to them, to speak into the situation. So a growth mindset is where you're bringing the student in a challenging mind, uh, situation and you are, they embrace the challenge, they preserve they say, in my failure, I learned something. They are not really driven by the outcome or the result. They're driven by the process. So even though a student is going through a difficult process and maybe they don't get the A, they get the D. The question that you ask is, what did you learn in the process? Because in the process, they can learn to say, I did not apply myself. I did not do my homework. Therefore, the process, however, taught me to be more patient, to be more diligent. I really like this whole idea 
of encouraging them to do something that challenges them, but also developing a growth mindset that they never come to you and say, I don't want that. I'm a failure. I'm not good at that. You teach them how to reframe those sentences and say, I'm not yet good at it. I'm going to be playing with somebody who is better at mathematics so that they can help me out. All right. So we are almost coming to that time. We've got four more minutes, but I just wanna give you time just to add or to build onto what we've just said. <clears throat> I think they should mention the takeaway of the session so that everyone should have the better understanding of the time they have invested today. Yes. The learning they could get. Please yes. do share every one of you one by one if you could do voluntarily. Can anybody share what you learned today? What the good ideas you got? And inshallah, you will be investing on your students. <laughs> Please do share your input. Anybody there can share the input received today by Ms. Mary. Mashallah, it was wonderful presentation, helping everyone to get the better ideas for the leadership. All right, I've got here, Sadaf has said, believe in yourself, lead in a good way. Well done, Sadaf, thank you very much. You also had said, actions speak louder than words instead of shout on students. It's better to be quiet for a second than that students will focus on action. It's just quiet for a while, it also works. Wonderful. You may speak on the mic, unmute your mic. You can speak for a second, at least. Anybody there? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Sir, first of all, you can be applied your students. And uh, second thing is that you can listen to your student politely as well. Wonderful. Ready. Thank you. Good. So listening is the most important thing that you learn today. Listen to your students and so that you can understand them and you can lead them properly in the class. Exactly. Great. Anybody sir. else? Very good. Anybody else should like would like to add something? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, yes, please. May I? Yes, please. Yes, I would like to say you should be a good communicator as a teacher. You have to listen to the students first. You have to understand the thoughts and thinking because as a teacher, we are teaching every age of kids. So it's better to listen to them first, understand them and teach them well. And if you show your positive energy to them, they will definitely understand your lecture uh, in a second, in a day. And uh, that's it. Sorry. Very good. Anybody who got something new today? Yes. Anything new you uh, found? Yes, please. Uh, the session was uh, really good. We enjoyed a lot and we learned a lot. And the thing I learned that uh, punishment is not the solution of any uh, misbehaving or anything towards the student. Uh, we can give them any concept with the love, with the uh, good environment and if we will give them good environment so we will get uh, good things from the students very good anybody else yeah. should add uh, please sir i have more. learned that uh, sir, yeah sir mahin uh -huh. i have learned that yeah, the yeah. self important self development is a very really, very important but the team development is also equally important as our our own uh, development Agreed. We grow with the team. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's, cool. That's why we are here today with the volunteer presentation from Miss Mary from America, that we are trying to grow as a team. Okay? team exactly. It's not one person growth, it's a team growth yeah. who team leads the... Exactly. Anybody else? Thank you. Most welcome. Anybody else would like to add something, what they learned today? Before they leave, please. We are almost done. Yeah. Did you realize Miss Mary added the last uh, second last point? I would say I think. 
the way of appreciating others the more you are descriptive in your appreciation for others the more you influence them positively mm -hmm. so i hope all of you from today onwards would be more descriptive in appreciating your students your staff your colleagues your management your team around working with you be more descriptive take their name physically and do show their qualities the characteristics they have positively and admire them so well softly that they feel that you really value them when you value them you really influence them so physically when you reach the person similarly you would reach the person in their mind in their heart so this is the best way to lead the team anybody else or we should end i think almost we are done miss lady anything you want to add finally no this this is it all i want to say is thank you very much for um for having me from chaik and your team and i want to add on to yes we we're talking about leading self but leading others which is the team component is very very important so well done for being a part of this for allowing me to speak to you and for educating one another i learned a lot from you and from your system as well these are my contact details uh if you feel free to text feel free to email i'm available if you want coaching uh for 15 minutes uh that will be a free session on me if you want to so feel free to reach out through me shake or through my email so that you can just understand i'll give you 15 minutes for free all right Ms. Thank Sheik, you very much. Also remain Ms. on Mary. the phone. If you can remain on the phone, Ms. Sheik, before we go. Always will be there. Thank you very much for your time, for your experience, and the leadership skills awareness that you have shared with us. Inshallah, we will be benefiting from it, and we will be always there to help each other and grow together as a team. I'm really appreciating by heart that you have given us today your precious time. and valuing us too much and training our staff and the teachers including principal even the admin so inshallah we will be together working wonderful inshallah thank you very much thank the staff for attending today's session and thank you very much mr mary again thank you